Welcome back to educator.com. Today we're going to discuss the difference between public goods versus private goods. So let's go ahead and, and get right to the material. So in today's lesson overview, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and define rival and non-rival and excludable and non-excludable. We're going to discuss the characteristics that distinguish the four types of goods. Uh, so there's private goods, public goods, common resources, artificially scarce goods. We're going to determine what types of goods the government uh, should get involved with. Again, this is a normative issue, but there generally is a sense of agreement on the types of goods that the government should basically leave alone and the types of goods that the government basically absolutely should provide here. And understand where healthcare fits into the four types of goods. Again, that's going to be, again, more of a normative issue, but we're going to kind of examine uh, in, in terms of the healthcare debate as to whether or not it should be public or private, again, using economic reasoning. Um, as a note for this lesson, uh, very rarely, um, at least uh, over the past 10 years, there's not, there's not really been a specific FRQ question that has aligned with the idea of rival, non-rival, excludable, non-excludable. However, there usually is consistently one or two questions on the multiple choice test portion of the test. And so it is very important to understand this. Now keep in mind, on the AP microeconomics exam, two-thirds of the exam is um, based on the multiple choice and only one third is FRQ. So it is definitely important to get a good grasp of public versus private and know the uh, different categories. So this lesson is, is directly designed to make sure you can get that one or two extra credit or extra points on the multiple choice portion of the exam. So characteristics of goods here. So uh, there's going to be two different uh, types of, uh, of two different situations here. So uh, a good can either be uh, rival in consumption or it can either be non-rival. It's very simple. So any good, whatever it is, whether it's a classroom lecture, whether it's uh, Disneyland, McDonald's, can either be con uh, categorized as being rival in consumption or non-rival in consumption. So what do they mean here? Well, let's take a look here. A good that cannot be consumed by more than one person at a time. For example, a hamburger. That's going to be rival. Only one person can consume a hamburger at a time. Similarly, a good that can cons be consumed jointly by groups of people. For example, uh, this educator.com lecture is going to be non-rival. If, if you're right now in, in Virginia watching this, and simultaneously, someone from California is watching this and someone from Hong Kong is watching this at the same time. It's not taking away from anyone else's experience. It's, it's an absolutely non-rival item. So you can categorize any good that is purchased and bought, usually in either the rival or non-rival category. And then the second thing, so the first thing is you got to figure out is it, is it rival or is it non-rival here? So it's either A or B right here. And then the second question is to figure out, is it excludable or is it non-excludable? Okay, so what is excludable and what is non-excludable? Well, let's go ahead and then take a look into this. So if the suppliers can prevent non-payers from consuming the good, then the item is excludable. If you have the ability to prevent someone from partaking of that good, then you have what's called an excludable good. If someone is selling hamburgers, then chances are the good is excludable. You can prevent non-payers from actually getting the hamburger. The item is excludable. Uh, now, what does non-excludable mean? Well, non-excludable, suppliers cannot prevent those who did not pay for an item from enjoying the benefits of the good. I would say uh, freeways are, by definition, they're non-excludable. Anyone basically that has a car even though maybe they didn't pay for it, um, it would be non-excludable. Uh, the beach, uh, public beaches, they are generally non-excludable. You can't prevent non-payers um, from, from actually making, uh, from going to the beach. So basically, there are two categories of, of goods, either rival or non-rival, and then excludable or non-excludable, and each good will either be either rival or non-rival, and either excludable or non-excludable. So again, the first thing here is figure out is it rival or non-rival. And then the second thing will be is it either excludable or non-excludable. 
So each characteristic of a good will fall into both of these two categories and um, it will only be one or the other.